Starman Podcast. Hello and welcome everyone to the Starman Debates Podcast. I am again your host, Devin, and with me again is Cody, Billy, and David. Say hello, guys. Yo. What's up? How's it going? Off to a rollicking good start. <laughs> Alright, so let's go around the table and everyone discuss what you're currently playing and give everyone an update on how your week's been. Starting with you, Cody. Week's been good. Been pretty good. Been playing a lot of Chrono Trigger. Ah, yes. About 11 hours worth. Fair chunk of time gaming. Billy, on to you. I'm not really doing much game this week, just trying to get caught up in some TV shows. I was watching a new show, Station 19. Just another fine fighting show. Okay. Pretty good. David. Week's been very good. I finished your Metroid Returns game, and I'm still chipping away at Breath of Fire 4. Ah, nice. Yeah. Don't know if really romance that it was mine, but... <laughs> <laughs> Glad you liked it all the same. Hey, no problem. And I switched over and was currently playing Hollow Knight, which is actually a fantastic game and looks great. Would you recommend it to fans of Dark Souls? Dark Souls fans would actually enjoy it. Um, it's a 2D game, so I don't know. Most Dark Souls fans souls like the 3D aspect and the rolling around. This does not have a dodge roll, oh. which does not help if you rely on the dodge roll. I kind of want to get it. It's a, I've heard a lot of good things about it. It is a great game and a very long game for its genre. It's a Metroidvania style. Hmm. More than a Dark Souls style. but Metroidvania? Yeah, it's a cross between Castlevania and Metroid, where basically sections of the game are locked off until you get power-ups to explore ah, that okay. section. Alright, I guess we should get right into the debate then, guys. So today's debate is uh, physical copy versus the digital copy. Me, personally, I am a fan of digital copies and will support it all the way through unless someone convinces me otherwise. Uh, where's your take on this, Billy? Um, well, actually, I used to be all about the physical copy because I was always concerned about if I went digital and sometimes my system, I would lose everything. But I've actually recently just switched... Uh, I got an external hard drive for my PS4, so I'm going to be doing a lot more like digital copies. I'm only going like, to buy the physical copies of games that I want to keep in my personal collection. Fair enough. David, your stance. I'm for both. It depends on which system. If it's handheld, digital all the way. Oh yeah, no, we'll get right into that. How digital is amazing for the portable systems. Yeah, on console... It's more price that I'm more concerned about. Because I've got a lot of old games on the PSN cheap that would have cost me like 30 bucks or even 60 if I got them physical. That is fair. And Cody, where are you at on this? Um, I guess I'm kind of... Same as David. So. I'm kind of for both. But for me, it depends on the system. Right. For, so, for my PS3, I go physical, and for PC, I go digital. Fair enough. Yeah, you don't really get many uh, physical copies of PC games these days. No. So, let's go around and uh, discuss, actually, the advantages and disadvantages of the physical copy. So... First of all, I find for a disadvantage is it really clutters up your game library. If you don't have storage space for all your games, it's hard to display your game library. You know, that's, that's a very good point. Um, I th think one of the pros for it would be um, at least you'll always have it. Well, that's not really true. The digital copy you will always have. It depends on whether you lose your computer. No, even if you lose your computer, if you downloaded it from somewhere, you will always have that download because you will always be able to log into your account. 
it sort of depends on whether you can get access to a computer, I guess. Yeah. And not just computer. We'll branch that out to even the console. That if oh. you break your Xbox and you download a bunch of games, you can go back on the Xbox Store and download those games mm-hmm. with no cost. You may have lost all your save, but that's yeah. a given any which way. Yeah, I guess that is true. Yeah, cause, yeah. Like I said, I was used to be physical because I used to love just playing the games. But then when I decided to like sell some of them, I'm like, I don't need them. Yeah, no. That's the other thing is with digital, you can't sell the copy yeah. of your game, so you can't get money back if you're done with the game yeah. and never will play it again. Yeah. And then, but now for digital, because. Uh, I will admit there's some games I had physical copies for and I sold them and I kind of wish I didn't. Mm-hmm. It's because I wanted to play them again and now at least for, for digital I can just re-download them. That is fair. That's... David, your any pros and cons to physical that you can think of? Actually, Billy pretty much said anything that was on my mind. Ah, okay. <laughs> now the problem with physical copies is that they can be broken. Uh, and unplayable or lost or stolen fairly easily. Yeah, I, I had that happen a couple of years ago. Oh. I had this, well, I had a PC game uh, called Star Trek Bridge Commander. I had been looking for it to play it. Then I heard, rolled my chair back and heard a crunch. Sickening crunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I look down and see four pieces. Ooh. So my question to you is, why was the game on the floor to begin with? It, it, it fell. Okay, that is fair. Oh, I can think of one disadvantage to digital. Okay. Yeah, uh, the game you're looking for might not all. This is more for old games, but they might not have always been made digital. No, not every game was on the digital library. That is fair. Um, the I, other thing about digital is, um, shoot, I was going to say something here and I totally forgot. <laughs> I'll come back to it, sorry guys. One thing about digital, it depends on the system, but depending on the system, while you're downloading the digital copy, depending on exactly what it is, you can't play your system very easily while it's going on. No, that's the thing. If you download something onto the system, usually you're dedicating your system to the download yeah. time. Which is a minor annoyance, but usually if I'm going to download something, I usually like to watch the download anyway. I'm kind yeah. of uh, OCD about that. I'm always worried about a game crashing during download. Yeah, I went on like that. I, I will agree with that because it has happened to me quite a number of times. Yeah, it's annoying and it's good to catch it right away. Yeah, that's the worst when it happens. Yeah, it's like, oh, your game was 90% done and then something happened. Now download it again. Like, I, when I first got my PlayStation, I had bought Final Fantasy VIII because, you know, I wanted to be able to play it again. Yeah. So I spent like 10 bucks, installed the entire thing, something went wrong, I tried to play it, corrupted, so I was like, did I just waste $10? Luckily it was only $10. Well, I deleted it and then reinstalled it again, it worked fine. Yeah, but if you're out $10, that's not a huge deal. If you paid 50 bucks for the game, then I'd be a little more upset if it didn't install. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then there's some cases where the game's in pieces. Like I, that happened oh. with uh, Uncharted Three. I had to download several parts of it for the whole thing to be complete. Oh wow, yeah, no. oh wow, really? Yeah, yeah, there's actually games that are fragmented because of their size at the time. Digital downloading isn't at the stage where we can download every game at its full. There are larger games where it's in pieces. Okay. But it's the same way as if a game had multiple discs to install yeah. before you can play the main game. 
Or you have to switch them in during game. Oh, that's always the yeah. worst. That's why, I mean, when I got Grand Theft Auto 5 originally, I think it was going to get it on the 360, then I realized there was two discs. Yeah. On 360 and one disc on the PS3. I'm like, I'm going to go PS3 on this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, would uh, those episodic games count? Those do count, in my mind, as uh, multiple digital copy games. Oh, okay. Where you need to download each episode of a game yeah. in order to have the full game. Yeah. Yeah, and e- each individual game costs. Like, I download. I bought and downloaded Life is Strange. Yep. Great game, but it cost me a total of almost $20. To oh, wow. Get $20, game. guys. But fragmented into uh, four separate parts. So, just to clarify here, four separate parts of $5 each? Yeah. Oh, okay, so a total of $20 for the whole game, which is not yeah. bad for a game. Not no. bad, but the downside was yeah, having to fun. wait for each one of them to release. Download. And download, yeah. Yeah, I can see... <laughs> I uh, think it would be like that. Because I know... I know a few of the episodic games I've bought when I've played. I've actually got them on the one disc, so... <laughs> I don't know how smart and just waited. Yeah. Usually if you wait the for a console version, at least they'll release the game in a physical copy of the full game. Yeah. I, I would have done that, but... The, uh... <laughs> the disc copy they released... Uh... Would have cost me... The like twenty bucks plus plus the four hundred dollars that because I didn't have the system it was on. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you didn't <laughs> have the system, you're gonna have to shell out for a new system to get it. Mm-hmm. Good point. <laughs> yeah. The as we'll go back to the uh, advantages of digital copies on a handheld system. It's great that all your games are on the system because if you want to take your games everywhere, you just have to take the system with you and not a briefcase full of games. Yeah, that's what I always didn't like about physical games because if you want to take any anywhere, you'd have to take physical discs or cartridges. That's fair, but the opposite of that with digital is that you can't really take a digital copy game to a friend's house to show it off. Yeah, that's... Unless I want to go to Billy's here, log into my Steam account, download a game, and yeah, play it. Yeah, that is true. And even then, I think there's a limitation to how many systems I can have my Steam account on. That is a very good point. Yeah, because that's what it was back in the day. Like, you got one game and you want to show it off. Yeah. Well, when you're young and you could like, go to friends' houses without having to worry about work the next morning. Yeah. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weekends were great. You went, took your game to a friend's house, showed off, and was like, look at what I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't really do that with the digital copies, unfortunately. Nope. Unless, of course. Like you detach the hard drive and look it in, but that's unless you take a laptop. But still, that's a lot of crap you have to take. Yeah, you're still if you're taking a laptop, it's the same as you're taking your whole console over. Yeah, which I have done. I've lugged that Xbox, the old original Xbox, quite a distance to show off. My Uh, back is still angry at me for all that. (laughs) uh, This story. Yeah. We'll get into that another time. <laughs> I, I just wait for the new book, Devin's Life. No. <laughs> I've I've never done that. Brought a console anywhere. No, no. Most sane people don't. <laughs> M- mind you, I've been asked to. Yeah, but my response was, and you're you're gonna pay if somebody breaks it. Yeah. Well, my eyes are uh, taking. When I was uh, going to visit my parents, I would always take my 360 home with me. Oh, yeah. But I would have a, the camera case, and usually if I had to sit on the bus, I was like, sit right next in the seat next to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I was with those assholes. Wait, so we're getting a little out of topic because we're talking about now consoles and the yeah. portability of yeah. consoles, which is not. 
remotely right. related to what we're discussing today, guys. Mm. We'll, we'll save that for another time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So, going back to uh, the digital library, though, I can also see where someone's like, yeah, but storage space on your computer, Devin. Digital library really sucks up your storage space. Which is true. Yeah, it's physical copy, you can have any amount of copies of games in a library or even a box if you don't want to display them and never worry about, oh, you're out of storage, you can't put, download any more games. Well, I, I can see that but also could just depending on you know, pr- pricing as well uh, get it Hard drive expansion, I guess? Yeah, but then you're constantly fiddling with hard drive expansions yeah. and storage spaces and transferring games over from yeah. one hard drive to another, which is iffy in my mind. I'm currently maxed at the storage space on my 3DS, and I'm worried about getting an expanded SD card and moving all my games over to that and okay. losing all my saves. Hmm. <sighs> I guess it would depend on the system. I mean, the PlayStation 3, when it before it went out, it had that last version with the slim but the big hard drive. I've, I've been downloading a bunch of games on that, and it's still only half full. Yeah, no, if you start off with a huge hard drive, you're not in a worry of storage space for a while. Yeah. But eventually there is going to be a day that comes where you're like, oh no, I'm low in storage space, and I want to get this game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I... <laughs> Yeah, now I'm getting some of what Dave was saying about the PS3, because my PS4, the reason why I got the big hard drive too, the hard drive expansion, because it's the space you also need for the, to like, install the games. Yeah, the installation do take up some space. And on, I don't know if it's the same on PS4... But on PS3, you would also have taking up your space. You'd also have update data. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that... Yeah, yeah. PS4 was the same. No, all systems are the same. It's basically what's used to run your console yeah. takes up some space, yeah. and then updating that takes up more space. Oh, no, I mean for the games. Some of the yeah. games install update data that just takes up space. Okay. Yeah. So, to make the game run faster. Yeah. Oh, run faster would, like, usually fix the bugs. Yeah. Okay. Because there are games that are, like, download a portion of the game onto your system so that when you plug it in, there's not a huge load times. Oh, yeah. Um, One I have that's like that is Valkyria Chronicles. Yeah. If I didn't install that that game data... Mm -hmm. Probably would be in menus forever. The one I have is uh, Final Fantasy Dissidia. It doesn't require you, but it's recommended that you download a portion of the game onto the system. Because otherwise you're watching a load screen for quite a while. Yeah. Between fights. (laughs) And in a fighting game, that's just not happening. Yeah. And at that point, it might as well be Load Screen Simulator. Yeah. Closest game I had to that was Xenoblade Chronicles Cross. It had like a bunch of download packs to speed up the game. You didn't need to download them, but recommended. Yeah, very yeah. recommended. Yeah, and that thing was like ten gigabytes worth of stuff. Oof. Jeez. And I had the physical copy, which I'm very glad I got instead of the digital. Oof. Ouch. Yeah. That. That's would... a big game. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. actually, Batman Arkham Knight so took mean, fifty. 50 plus gigs on my PlayStation. Yeah, but that's the full game. Dave yeah. was talking about he had a physical copy that was just 10 gigs. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like... Of data packs. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. Ew. I was... I don't know if I'm remember, remembering this properly, but some games have the... When you buy a digital game, you get the game... You install the game. Yes. And it's, it's in one of the folders. Yep. But is there also, like, game data that goes with that? Or is that 
what you install just the game data right there. What you install should just be the game data itself. Okay. There are games that are like, um, you download the digital copy. Actually, no, I can't think of any game that actually made you da download more for it to make the game run faster. Once you download the digital copy, that was all you needed. Then you bought, uh, or not bought, but you updated the game with any bug fixes and that. Which would kind of expand the uh, storage space because it's adding more content for bug fixes. Oh, true, true. The... But it should be a minor. Yeah. So, one thing I hate about some physio physical games is you may have the disc, but you still have, like, it installs a game. Yeah. And you'd think you'd be able, after installing the entire game on your system from the disc, you'd be able to play it. Oh, no, that's usually not the case with yeah. a physical copy. It installs a portion of the game, as I said, yeah. to make the game run faster or better or smoother, yeah. but it doesn't install the full game. Thereby to play. making you need the discs. So. Yeah. Uh, Skyrim was good for that. You had to use the uh, disc to download all the DLC packages and that. And I think there was an installation for the game itself, but then yeah. you still need the disc to actually open and play the game. Yeah. So. Anything else on uh, physical copy or digital copy that we haven't really covered? Yeah, well, I know we touched about like any uh, the games that are on multiple discs. Yeah, so that's I know that was okay. What is the worst amount of games, like multiple disc games, that you've seen? Um, like you opened it up, it's like wow, there's a lot of discs. I can only think of like four disc games for the PlayStation One yeah. era. Oh yeah, those were fun. Yeah, I remember like I mean. Insert disc free, okay. Insert yeah. disc free, it's like two hours later, insert disc four. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, why, why was disc free a thing? <laughs> yeah, the only thing I think was the ones on the PS1, and I think I had you know, on one game on the PC, I think it was SWAT. It was yeah. like four, dis four discs. I remember SWAT being four discs. Yeah. I had one for the PC that was six. Wow. So, what was that? Uh, <laughs> Legends of Legends or something? It was a real-time strategy game, much along the lines of like Red Alert, but more of a futuristic okay. space battle. Okay. All right. Wow, that, that... But that was annoying. Oh, yeah, no. I was like, I got the fit disc five. I was like, almost done. Crash. Oh. <laughs> And you could, I could see the look in your eyes when that happens. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I, I twitched and walked away from the computer, <laughs> tried again tomorrow. <laughs> Did it work finally? I finally got to install. Had a few issues with it launching, but eventually I had to look up online for a few fixes. Okay. Right. Part of the soul died that day. Oh. If I had a soul at that time, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so... I think the one I had that was the most discs was the Sims 2. Yeah, the Sims games were... Four discs? Yep. And so I picked it up because I always loved the Sims. Yep. And I had to do a toss-up between the Sims 2 and Resident Evil 3. Yeah, that I you're think. regretting and wishing you had Resident Evil 3. I, I regretted my choice as soon as I got home to my from Halifax. I installed the entire game. Oops. I installed the entire game. And, uh... Went to run it. Yep. Uh, PCI graphics card did not match up. Ah, uh, that sucks. Yeah. The old system requirements for yeah. PC gaming, yeah. yeah. You gotta look those up before you even consider buying a game. Yeah, I've direct 
Okay, DirectX. Those are those. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You do not have DirectX installed on your computer. This game will not run. Yeah. Or you have a version of DirectX, but it's not the right one. No. Yeah. Luckily, though, you can fix that easily by going online and downloading the one you need. Yeah. yeah. For usually free, but I had to pay one time for yeah. something. It wasn't DirectX, but it was uh, some uh, graphics update that I needed for my uh, laptop. Yeah. I pwned DirectX twice for two ga- games. I think it was the PC versions of Metal Gear Solid and Dino Crisis. Uh, and... Yeah, and this one, surprisingly, it got them to work once. Played them once, then when I went to play them again, they stopped working. Ugh. And that's when my uh, dad vowed if I ever went on the shopping trip again, I came back with a computer game. He would, <laughs> he would throttle, be... yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the PC era was not great for physical games. Well, like for me, I think a year later I got the uh, them on my PlayStation, so. <laughs> But we'll go into that actually, but the uh, library of uh, physical versus digital, because this is actually a selling point for a lot of people. Digital libraries actually, or the digital stores are actually great for people who live in remote areas that can't actually get to a gaming store. Yeah. It's... And don't want to go on Amazon and wait for shipping and handling yeah. of a game. Yeah, that's actually a found point. Like, well, people who, as like I said, if you don't have access to a car and no one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're a 15 year old boy who's waiting for a game to come in, and you know your parents are like, well, we can't drive to the big city, Jimmy. We gotta save our gas, and we're busy working these weekends. Yeah. So, what you're talking about, you know, in the different countries and having to save gas and doing digital. Yeah. It depends on where they live. Internet, right? Like the internet. No. Right? Digital game prices sometimes differ. Depending on country and location, because it's based on country cost. Uh, yeah, but I can't it, imagine that the cost would be different than if they went to a game store and bought it. Because otherwise there's no sell value. Yeah. I thought I had heard like somebody say one time that to buy a game would cost them like, s- close to... Thirty dollars when somewhere else it would cost like sixteen. Yeah, well, that also depends on first yeah. uh, if you're buying a second-hand copy of the game or if you're buying the yeah, f- yeah, brand new copy, yeah. brand new copy. Well, I, I was speaking more of digital too. Well, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, the digital store has a set price because it's yeah. the same quality of game every time you download it. Yeah, whereas second-hand and. Uh, new, brand new, are different because one's been handled, the other one hasn't. So, the price has to drop because it's a second-hand copy of a game. Okay, here's here's something else about physical copies. You can never tell. When you're buying a physical copy, there's no guarantee. It may be marked as new. There's no guarantee it's new. Yeah, my um, my brother-in-law had an issue with that. Yeah, like, and actually, it was a Christmas game. You got like a Christmas gift or an actual Christmas game. Guess <laughs> 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 it's a good one. Yeah, no, you, you phrase that as if it's like no, it's a game of Christmas. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> there's not enough of those. <laughs> there's there's, 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 that. Yeah, <laughs> I was just about to say that. I'm, I'm assuming. He opened it up and it wasn't the right game. Oh, it was the right game, but it wasn't uh, a great. Oh, it wasn't shrink wrap. Yeah, I, I, I had. Yeah, the only way to be guaranteed for sure that you're getting a new copy is if it's shrink wrapped. Yeah, yeah. And in a store behind a glass display case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll agree with the glass display case and shrink wrap, but even shrink wrapped. Because I got a copy of Street Fighter Cross Tekken for Christmas. It was completely shrink-wrapped. Peeled it up, opened it up. Super Street Fighter 4. How Arcane on edition. earth <laughs> did that happen? 
It, it, it was a used copy. Did Houdini go in and magic it? <laughs> it's like, Houdini's like, oh, I really want Street Fighter or cross decking, but Street Fighter Force for sale. Magic swap. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'll I, take what this I think, game. Well, what I'm assuming has happened is somebody put the wrong case in, took it back, and... They shrink-wrapped it again. Yeah. Well, that I assume they shrink-wrapped it for my folks, but I was re- kind of ticked off. Well, oh, so yeah. Well, so we'll launch... Oh, well, okay. Some stores actually do re-shrink-wrap them. Oh, I didn't actually knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Because huh. I, I was like... It's not common, and it really shouldn't be done if it's a... Uh, used game. If it's a used game, Good. regardless of quality, but... Some stores do that just so it's like packaged better, and, and they can I just say and they can sell it as new instead of. Yeah. Well, no, they still have to mark it as uh, used, but it prevents tampering if it's on the shelf and they can't monitor their store properly. Okay, it's very hard for someone to open up a shrink wrap game and then be like steal the game out of the okay. case. Yeah, it's true. I, I wish, like when you said, like I bought a copy of. Soul Calibur 4? Yeah. No, 5. It, it it was marked as new. Wasn't shrink wrapped. It had one of those stupid little like circular stickers just f- flipped over the to seal it. Yeah. I'm like, why am I paying new prices for something that's obviously not new? Yeah, but that's store policy. We won't get into that. No, that's, that, that's a whole one of the can of worms ah, that yeah. we didn't want to touch. Yeah. Back to physical versus digital, but yeah. With digital also, that copy's always there unless they take it off the store. Um. There are times where I've gone for a game and it's not at the store. And I had to resort to the digital copy or wait and oh, hopefully yeah. that store will eventually get it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But there are times the digital copy gets removed. That's what I said. Yeah. Like sometimes they do take it off the store, and then that sucks. Yeah, I, I ran usually in... it's because it wasn't selling, or they want to make way for newer release games for copyright reasons. Copyright reasons too. Yeah, I, I ran into that yeah. uh, with Alan Wake. Oh yeah, they took it off the Steam. The licensing for the music ran out. Oh, wow. Oof, yeah. Now that was a good game. Yeah, and. Now I'm never going to be a, the only way I can get a copy of it is buying an Xbox 360 copy and buying an Xbox 360. Well, that's a bummer. Did you give you any compensation for taking it off? Oh, I didn't buy it. Oh, okay. Well, because hmm. if I had, if I had, that sounds like you did there for a sec. Yeah, you sounded like you were playing on Steam, and when they took oh, it no. off, they. I took... wanted to buy it on Steam. Okay. But now I can't. Because I imagine if you have the copy already downloaded, they wouldn't. No, be they able won't. To... They won't take it off your library. Account. Which in itself is fair, because I mean, hey, I paid for it, and if they do force you to do that, I don't see why. But if they do, you they should, should compensate. Yeah, yeah they should. Yeah. Like, Here's your money back. We're sorry. Luckily, Steam doesn't do that. No, I've never seen any online store that would do that. That's bananas because um, I mean I know something similar or something like that but um, uh, just with my phone there my ring, couple of my ringtones when I want to get my new phone they run available on iTunes they're going to be downloaded yeah also another downside to physical is something David mentioned prices because there are some physical copies you want but unless you're willing to pay $300 you're not going to have them yeah that's kind of a video game stock market and that's another topic yeah that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking but I see what you say like hey if it's a digital copy it's always going to be the yeah. set price regardless of how popular how yeah while the game's doing or how bad the game's doing the price will never sometimes it drops they do have sales for oh, digital yeah. copy use but they never raise the price of the game. oh no yeah they never it was right now the Playstation uh, sales and 
For digital I mean, copies, I guess it depends on whether it's in early access. Early access will change its price because yeah. of the release and yeah. how much more content it is. Yeah, that that's is the true. benefit of buying an early access game early, is you get it at its cheapest price. Yeah, like, like I love buying games on sale on like Steam because oh, you always end, yeah you always end up with really good deals. No, you don't say. Well, oh, I don't believe that. Do you? No, really, no. Do you? S- so, actually, <laughs> sometimes you end up with good deals. Sometimes you end up with lemons. Well, that's just your fault for not actually inve- doing your investigation of the game. Actually, yeah, that is. <laughs> well, it de- it it also depends on the game, because you read the um, for games that don't work on your computer. I have had a couple incidents where the system requirements say it will work. I install it; it doesn't. Yeah. That's more of a problem with the PC yeah, gaming than yeah. And... yeah. It really has nothing to do with the true. digital copies. No, it's your know, system. What's yeah. that is true. I'm sort of on the, I guess you can say I support both, but lately, I guess I'm leaning more toward, it, it depends on the style of game. Style of game? Like, JRPGs, I will buy physical copies. Okay. And RPGs. Mm-hmm. But, and it also depends on the how much I enjoy the game. Because if I enjoy the game a lot, I will also buy it on PC as well. Okay. Dave, your final thoughts on it? Well, I don't really play a lot of PC, so I'm more console. Yeah, but... Though, if I do get physical, the plus side is if it's a rare one, I could flip it over for more when I sell it or trade in. That's true. So, again, that's based on luck and how well the game goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Bill, your final thoughts. Yeah, like some the di- digital, like some they have them, like they have that way you can always be down with them. And physical, from always been for me now for like collect because a lot of physical games you get the collector's edition. Yeah, too, and you get all this bonus stuff, and that's usually the last couple years I've been getting the collector's edition of the WWE games because I would, don't think I could ever go digital. No, no, since I can't get those. Collectibles. Yeah. That is true. So, yeah, there, I agree with that. The, a lot of the physical copies can also come with a collector's edition that has some free stuff for you that you're not going to get with the digital copy. No. <laughs> I, I guess it depends on the di- digital cop, um, the game and the site that's doing it. Some sites do offer digital copies that have a lot of collector's stuff. Yeah. But... And we'll also even ship collectible stuff, too. Uh, yeah. But it's not a common thing. Yeah. My final thoughts are, I still will go digital over physical, because I like the idea of my game library all being on one place. I am not a great organized person. <laughs> so, no, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I'm not either. But I, I tend to agree. If there is a game that I do want to show off and have in my collection, then yes, I might buy the physical copy. Yeah. Or, as Billy says, if it comes with some neat collectibles, I'll probably shell out for a physical copy. Yeah, I can agree with that. And with that, I guess we'll wrap that up, because I think we touched everything we could on the digital and physical copies. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Uh, tune in next week, and have a good one. See you guys. Later. See ya. We really got to work on the intros and the intros, guys. Yeah. <laughs>